that means stay on existing protocols to welcome all of you here at the Ministry of Information, the Child Will Conference Hall. Today we have a full house. The Minister, Honorable Gerald Lepia, is attending the funeral of the son of whom President Selly, Honorable Charles Selly, will be laid to rest today. So we then ask to handle this press conference on behalf of the Ministry, and we will proceed accordingly. Today we have as our principal guest, <clears throat> the Honorable Josiah Jokai, uh, who has become a friend to Mika because of his frequent appearances here. Uh, the Director General of the Civil Service Agency uh, is here because he has completed what his agency called the Employee Physical Verification and Headcount Exercise. That exercise is being carried out across government agencies and we also have here today Professor Alaric Topa. He is uh, the chairperson of the Governance Commission. We have Honorable Yanni Vabla. He's the Director General of the Liberia Institute for Public Administration. We also have in our midst Honorable George W.K. Yango, the Executive Director of the National Watch Commission. They are here accompanying the CSA bus because the reports for their respective agencies have been completed. And so, we would like to welcome all of you, including all our platform guests, to the Charles Bayon Conference Hall here at the Ministry of Information, <clears throat> Cultural Affairs and Tourism. Before we listen to the CSA bus, I would like to make remarks on behalf of the Ministry uh, on certain pertinent issues uh, unfolding in Liberia. The government is concerned that normal academic activities at the University of Liberia remain interrupted due to faculty protests. The President, His Excellency, Ambassador Joseph Ivan Waika, is very concerned about the ongoing situation at the University of Liberia due to protests from the, univers from the University Faculty Association. And the protest is based on serious issues which they have pointed out. Among other things, the faculty calls for the change of leadership of the university and the President, His Excellency, has taken siege of the matter with keen interest and has urged the board of trustees of the university to convene immediately to resolve the situation and ensure that normal activities can resume immediately. The President hopes that the matter will be resolved as soon as possible. Our information is that the University Board of Trustees convened yesterday, Monday, and took several actions, including the formation of the, med of the Mediation Committee to resolve the crisis with the Faculty Association and students. The government remains hopeful that the crisis will be resolved soon and that regular academic activities will resume in the soonest. We listened to the news, read the newspapers this morning, and we see that the former president of the Liberia Council of Churches, 
Mr. Cotton Brown, urge the president of the government of Liberia not to turn Liberia's victory into what he calls mourning. To thank the bishop and every Liberian who is following the governance process under the able leadership of President Joseph Imabwaka. We assure them also that the country is in good hands and that we will not let the country down. We would like to say to the bishop, we heard his message. The president is working very hard every day to deliver on the arrest agenda. And that agenda will deliver prosperity to the Liberian people. Most of the action that the president, the president is taking now will bear fruits in a few months. But the president has already begun to take to act on lower hanging fruits. The Ministry of Finance and Development Planning, for example, has become the regularization of payments of salaries for civil servants beginning the 15th of every month. And we can simply say to be that the government is not in arrears for the month starting the inauguration of the new government. Liberia's victory will never turn into the moon under the able leadership of President Joseph Mabwaka. And you can take our word for that. Also, we want to remind Bishop Koto Brown that a nation moans when the church fails. The bishop should remember that on his watch as the president of the Liberal Council of Churches, church leaders said that Liberians were criticizing President Weir with die for doing so. It is regrettable that the bishop didn't see anything wrong with that statement. As a pastor and former religious ambassador to the former president, allegedly duped hundreds of poor Liberians of thousands of dollars, Bishop Brown also doesn't see anything wrong with that. We can assure Bishop Brown that every Liberian, the country, and every Liberian, that the country is on an irreversible path of progress on the dynamic and able leadership of President Waka. And that our victory as a country will not be turned to moon. We appeal to Bishop Brown to speak about the many issues affecting poor Liberians outside the government. By doing so, we believe that we, together, can make life grow better. Some media outlets reported that the government of Liberia apologized for the psychological distress to former Chief Justice Gloria Scout and alleged that the government was calling the former justice preferential treatment. On this issue, we'd like to be very unequivocal. But we assume the leadership at the Ministry of Information who said, at the core of our duty will be truth telling. And we expect our media counterparts to follow suit. When you go and carry a bold battle story on the front page of your papers to see that the government of Liberia has released the former justice who is a convict of the trial court for the crime of murder. You try to pin a dent on the government integrity. Because the government, the executive, the president cannot grant what you 
consider as compassionate being. It is to be a preview of the court. So as a government, we didn't want to go through the back and forth with Kimia, we came here to talk about it. And still some of the media institutions were adamant. Like they would normally say, we stand by our story. So the ministry instructed us to take a team of journalists at the Borja Center prison. What was the purpose of the visit? For you to see the living body of Justice Clark and co defendants behind bars. And we selectively invited individuals from those institutions that have reported the story. We couldn't get from East Africa, but we made effort to reach out to them. We went to the central prison. And the journalists then requested the prestige superintendent to grant an interview to the former justice. Their requests were granted on a condition that they couldn't outline that would be allowed to do a live coverage in a prison facility. It's a government owned Ministry of Information page. And a brief interview was conducted. When asked, what does she make of views that were released on compassionate release by some, by some media institutions? She said it was sad. It was part of the cruel and inhumane treatment that she and other defendants continue to receive at the border center of prison. The government didn't render any preferential treatment. That visit was intended to expose the evil fabrication by some media institutions that the government has granted the form of justice compassionately. The visit exposed the lies and established the truth. And as a government, we wouldn't want to go back and forth on this issue. Because the scout has not been released on anything called compassionately. She's behind bar at the Morocco St. George Prison awaiting trial before the Supreme Court of that leader. Lastly, before I take my seat, let me inform you that uh, the Liberia Immigration Service has begun the in-service in training of some 185 personnel at East Bangar Regional Hub in Palm County. The topics being covered and the training include border security, passport fraud, general security, fire safety in workplaces, Liberia DEA legal and regulatory framework, VRP EPS protocol, border and mass patrol, and custom fraud, among others. It is a good thing that the Immigration Service is doing this, and we take the leadership of the Able Commissioner, Honorable Senator Steve Zagel. A private organization, our Children's Safe Again Foundation, is providing health, health services to hundreds of returnees from Ghana at the Johnson Bay Holding Center. The services being provided include laboratory services, medication, referral to other health services, and specialist health promotion and health education. The government thanks the group and every Liberian that is making. Uh, I help you to make our fellow Liberians feel at home and encourage everyone to welcome them back as a return to the sweet land of liberty. That being said, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, now seize the moment to invite to the podium the Director General of the CSA, Honorable Josiah Joka, of your remarks. Institute 
of Public Administration, the Honorable Professor Alari Topa, the Chairman of the Governance Commission, the Honorable George Nyango, the CEO, that's the Chief Executive Officer of the National Watch Commission, Honorable Darlington A.P. Smith, the Deputy Director General for Human Resource Management and Policy, the Civil Service Agency, other distinguished officials of government, the CSA team that accompanied me, members of the press, fellow citizens, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On May 22, 2024, the Civil Service Agency, the CEA, the CSA, officially announced the start of the Employee Status Regularization Project, the ESRP. This project of utmost importance aims to effectively strengthen and manage the payroll system for transparency and efficiency. It is a crucial step in our commitment to minimize waste and abuse of government resources in strict compliance with the CSA's statutory regulations. The accumulation of ghost names, incomplete personnel action notices, and outdated information have significantly compromised the integrity of the government's payroll system. The gravity of these situations necessitates the comprehensive cleanup of the payroll to ensure accuracy, transparency, and effective utilization of public resources. To achieve this vital goal, the CSA has embarked on a meticulous journey to sanitize the payroll. We are conducting a comprehensive physical verification and headcount of employees of more than 100 spending entities. This process is designed to be no stone unturned, ensuring the following. Identify legitimate employees on the government of Liberia payroll. Regularize the statuses of civil servants who did not complete their personnel action notices, the PAN, in keeping with Section 35, 1 through 6 of the revised Human Resources Policy Manual, who are already on the government's payroll. Identify and collect pertinent missing employee data to update the missing fields on the payroll and remove ghost names, illegitimate employees, and double dippers. Forging partnerships with relevant government institutions is a key strategy for the CSA in its quest to sanitize the national payroll. The CSA has approached and is partnering with the National Identification Registry, that's the NRA, a crucial ally in our mission. The NRA has agreed to provide the civil service agency with an application programming interface, the APR, to access the national database. This integration will ensure seamless data synchronization and accuracy between our critical systems, further blustering our efforts. Besides, the civil service employees' headcount and verification system offers duplicate detection functionality. Under this functionality, the system can detect and flag and a duplicate national identification registry number or social security numbers, ensuring the integrity of employee records. 
necessarily the duplicate detection mechanism in this undertaking has the potential to try a double dippers and other malfeasances that have attended to payroll padding or bloating. Another functionality of our application is the time and attendance function. Under this function, the application provides robust time and attendance tracking capabilities, allowing for efficient monitoring of employee work hours and leave management. Some civil servants often come to work without compliance with the required time of being in the office at least 8 a.m. and at most 9 a.m. and leave work before 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. as required by law and policy. Therefore, the time and attendance function is essential to ensure that legitimately employed civil servants manageably use their eight hours to ensure efficiency <coughs> and are working properly. Also, our newly released application has a dashboard for each spending entity. The system offers a comprehensive dashboard view for heads of spending entities and provides real-time insights and analytics on employees under their purview. The dashboard for the Director General of the CSA provides a 360 degree view, monitoring and control of the overall interaction of spending entities and their employees and the ability to make changes as may be required. At this juncture, officials of government, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the CSA reports that physical verification and hair counts of employees have been concluded at 26 government spending entities, from which we have blocked 210 unverified individuals from 12 entities pending verification in one month. The spending entities include the Ministry of State for Presidential Affairs, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Liberia Broadcasting System, the Central Office, the National Water, Sanitation and Hygiene Commission, Agriculture and Industrial Training Institute, Monrovia City Corporation, Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, Ministry of State, Ministry of Education, Central Office, Ministry of Mines and Energy, Liberia Institute for Public Administration, and the National Center for Coordination and Response Mechanism. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the savings, the monthly savings as a result of blocking the 210 unverified individuals amongst those. $74,998.89. Meaning, going forward, the government is going to be saving $899,986.68 from blocking the 210 individuals. Additionally, ladies and gentlemen, the CSA has finalized the analysis of three government spending entities attendance records from January to March 2024. The analysis reports show that several employees are in direct violation of Section 4, 3, 4, and 16 of the revised civil service standing orders of 2012, which states, and I quote, unauthorized absence from work for a period of 14 consecutive days may be considered by an agency head as resignation, unquote. In keeping with this provision, the civil service agency has recommended dismissal, suspension, and warning actions against employees 
from the three spending entities. Spending entity number one, Ministry of Mines and Energy. The Civil Service Agency has recommended the dismissal of 40 employees in violation of this provision. The dismissal of the 40 employees will save the government $18,539.98 monthly and will save the government annually $222,479.76. Still, with the Ministry of Mines and Energy, the Civil Service Agency has recommended the suspension without pay 81 employees. These employees, on average, did not show up to work for 8 to 12 days Monday. The government is saving for the month in question $36,881.87 for the month as a result of suspending the 81 employees without pay. Finally, for the Ministry of Mines and Energy, the Civil Service Agency has recommended 10 employees to be warned and with the total amount of $514 deducted from their salary. The individuals, on average, did not show up to work for five to seven days monthly. The Liberia Institute for Public Administration the Civil Service Agency has recommended 20, the dismissal of 28 individuals. The dismissal of these individuals received the government $17,597.17 monthly and received the government on the overall $211,166.04 annual. These employees, on average, did not show up to work for 14 to 20 days monthly. Still, with the Liberia Institute for Public Administration, the Civil Service Agency has recommended the suspension without pay title employees. These employees suspension will lead to one month saving of 17,000 $215.75 for the month in question. Employees, on average, in this category, did not show up for work 8 to 12 days monthly. Liberia Institute for Public Administration still, the Civil Service Agency has recommended the warning of three employees. The savings as a result of the warning action for the month is $559.40. The employees concerned on average did not show up to work five to seven days in a month. The National Center for Coordination and Response Mechanism, NCCRM, The Civil Service Agency has recommended the removal from their payroll 12 individuals who were paid the total sum of $25,708 for the period October to December 2023. The Civil Service Agency has also recommended to the Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission the former executive director and the controller for investigation and if possible to restitute this amount $25,708 for illegally paying ghost workers. The CSA has identified and subsequently blocked Sorry, I'm going to give you the total savings as a result of these actions, the dismissal, the suspension, and the warning actions to the three entities. The monthly saving of the government as a result of these actions amounts to $117,016.17. 
month the government is going to be saving that money. Annually, the government is going to be saving $488,816.82. Distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, the CSA has also identified and subsequently blocked 54 individuals with duplicate national identification numbers on the payroll pending verification in one month. The CSA is very concerned about this great situation and will immediately engage with Geotech, the developer of the Alternative Temporary Automated Payment System, the ATAPS, that is being used to pay civil servants currently. And the relevant authorities at the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning to explain these unfortunate circumstances. The spending entities concerned Ministry of Education, Central Office, the CSA block 18 duplicate accounts on a payroll as a result of having duplicate identification numbers. The monthly saving is $4,122.69. The annual saving as a result of that action is $74,208.42. Ministry of Health, Central Office, the CSA block 32 accounts with duplicate national identification numbers. The monthly saving is $14,486.96. The annual saving is $63,582.72. Ministry of Post and Telecommunication, the Ministry of Black, one double national identification number. The saving is $150. Ministry of Mines and Energy, the CSA block three names or accounts with double national identification numbers. The saving is $1,210.05. The annual saving is $10,890.45. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, for these grave financial resource leakages in our system, the Civil Service Agency requests the Ministry of Justice to fully investigate the human resource directors and financial controllers of the Ministry of Mines and Energy, Liberia Institute of Public Administration, and the National Center for Coordination Response Mechanism. An official communication will be appropriately sent to the Minister of Justice to this effect. Findings from our ongoing physical verification and hair counts show that the human resource directors and financial controllers of the three spending entities allegedly, allegedly sorry, processed the salaries of the concerned employees who did not work for 20 to 61 days from January to March 2024, but illegitimately receive total salary payments for the three months in question. It is also important to inform the public that the government of Liberia fully supports this critical national initiative of sanitizing the national payroll. The necessary modalities have been worked out by the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning and the civil service agency for the government to provide the needed funding support, whilst the Public Procurement and Concession Commission, the PPCC, has assured the CSA of its readiness to grant the necessary approvals to facilitate the procurement process. The CSA is profoundly grateful to the President, His Excellency, Joseph Yuma Bwakai Sr., for his government's support of this much needed national initiative. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, the President, His Excellency Joseph Yuman Bwaka Sr. on April 30th, 2024 launched the National Policy Guidelines for Recruiting Independent Consultants 
and consultancy firms in the public service of Liberia. The policy was developed to address the challenges in effectively managing consultancy services, particularly hiring procedures across government spending entities. Since the launch of the National Policy Guidelines, the Civil Service Agency has effectively communicated the procedures for hiring independent consultants and consultancy firms. A National Consultancy Steering Committee was established comprising five members from the Ministry of Finance and CSA. That's two members from the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning and three from the Civil Service Agency. To date, the steering committee has received a total of 180 applications through the submission of terms of reference and requisitions from individuals and firms. The steering committee evaluated, shortlisted, and interviewed 120 individuals. Of the total individuals and firms interviewed, 69 out of the 120 individuals were accepted, with three firms also accepted. The CSA will officially communicate the names and particulars of the first batch of selected individuals and firms to the corresponding entities to produce their contracts for the services to be provided under the consultancy terms and conditions. The contracts will be signed by the consultant, the head of the spending entity, and approved by the Director General of the Civil Service Agency. Meanwhile, the CSA wishes to inform all spending entities that no position in the classified civil service will be considered on a consultancy. Members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the CSA will provide updates every other week on the status of the ongoing employee physical verification and headcount exercise under the Employee Status Regularization Project, the ESRB. The CSA wishes to express sincere gratitude to the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning and the Ministry of Justice for their support to this critical national endeavor. As a matter of fact, the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning and the CSA met and have agreed on the mechanism for these investigations and to ensure that government resources that were illegitimately received are restituted, meaning are paid back into government coffers. The Deputy Minister for Fiscal Affairs was supposed to be here today. They are currently at the legislature, engaging members of the legislature. That's why he's not here. The Solicitor General is also at the legislature, but we have all agreed to meet here today for this joint press briefing. Many, our three institutions are working together collaboratively to ensure that we clean up our payroll and bring efficiency and productivity to the public service of our country. On that note, Honorable Minister, let me recognize you. I know you came in the middle of uh, our presentation, but we extend heartfelt thanks and appreciation to you and the entire Mika family for availing this historic platform to the CSA. As always, we are very grateful to the media for its continuous support and dissemination of this critical public information. Uh, thank you. So we did you get the questions? Sure, you listened to him. He was as clear as crystal. So we now entertain questions from the mother of the press. One question per individual. Thank you so much. My name is George Momo and I report for this TV library. So, um, Honorable Director, thank you so much for your presentation and the work 
does fight. And I'm concerned the last time at this very hall, you spoke of the issue of threats. And with this step taken to restitute um, government money, people will tell me as which hunt. So I'm concerned about your security. What can you say about your security? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you so much, Moral uh, Director. My name is Strogon Flammer and I report for Scott Uh There are a lot of concerns. Uh, one key one is uh, uh, now you recommended the dismissal of uh, several individuals at uh, these entities you investigated. Is there any mechanism that you are also recommended to fill the gaps that will be created in those institutions? Um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Joker, and I want to commend you for um, the level of progress being made at the CSA. I'm here, Kezi Zoe from Spoon Evan. So, um, upon completion of the physical verification and head count exercise that is being uh, conducted, and based on the findings, uh, what are the next steps? Are there plans to like, you know, make this a regular exercise? And if so, how frequently uh, do you think that would be conducted? Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Ponya Felix. I'm a colleague at the newspaper. Oh, DG, um, having taken all these steps, this laser suspension, and what have you, can it tell us the total number of civil servants in the government area? So we just take the last question, please. Good afternoon. My name is Ines Ray Soko, and I work for Luxe Radio and TV. I sat there and listened to the Honorable DJ. Government pays in two currencies, US dollar and Liberian dollars. The figures listed were not specified, mm -hmm. whether United States dollars or Liberian dollars, and it's of concern. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I will start with George. George Moore. Uh, he's concerned about my security. And he's also concerned as to whether or not this will not be uh, construed or misconstrued as a witch hunt. Uh, in the first place, I think as DG, I don't even know who's going to be dismissed. Uh, I'm glad that Niala is here in terms of this is a system effort. Um, so it's scientific, so those identified were identified through the process. So in terms of John Brown will be dismissed, Mary will be dismissed, it is the head of the entity who will issue those communications and will notify the CSA. But the CSA has also acted in terms of actions we took to black and on the payroll because of the violations. So uh, this is now a wish on in shock, that's what I want to say. This is Everybody, I mean, I'm sure people who are affected cut across the spectrums of our society. These are Liberians. That's all we know. So it's not a wish hunt. The CSA is not wish hunting. We have a system in place to fix our broken uh, public service, the civil service. Uh, with regards to my security, well, I think we have a piece of job to do. We are a team at the CSA. This is not just about me. I'm only announcing uh, the actions taken by the institution. But if people target me for announcing the actions taken by the institution, I think the state has a responsibility to provide security for me because I work for the country. So that's all I can say about that. I will leave this, the, the next thing to God because uh, you know I pray to God every day even though I'm sinful. Uh, I'm not a saint. So, but I'm trusting that God is guiding me through these processes, guiding me and my family through these processes. Um, Trocon, you talk about filling in the gaps of the dismissed individuals. This is not just a CSA question. 
uh, the heads of entities and their leaderships oh. will make subsequent determination, but the CSA will ensure that any hiring process is consistent with law and policy. That's what I can assure you, to make sure that we don't have misfits, uh, to make sure that we don't have square pegs and round holes, to make sure that we have the right people in the right places, uh, right people serving in critical positions uh, to help with the improvement of the efficiency and effectiveness of the workforce of our country. Yeah, you asked about the next steps. That's a very good question. The entire project is called Employee Status Regularization Project. There are two phases. Phase one is the fiscal verification and hair counts that we are conducting at all the entities to be able to know who's legitimate employee, who's not legitimate employee. So the second phase is for us to give the identified legitimate employees their personal action notices to complete them so that we can make sure that they are processed and they are legally employed and that they can enjoy the rights and benefits pertaining to their employment or statuses. So O'Neill, you talk about the um, total number of civil servants in the country. When we took over, my colleagues and I, we informed the Liberian people that we had a total of, on the payroll, we had a total of 67,746 individuals on the government's national payroll in the civil service. Uh, but that's disaggregated by numbers, different numbers, I won't say that just off. Okay. Um, that's what we had. But I can tell you that if we go back to check, there's going to be some significant reduction because of the number of actions we've taken over time. Um, uh, my dear sister, I about the currency. Uh, you know, all of this constitutes the total amount that the employee takes because the Ministry of Finance has a way of breaking it up into Liberian dollar and Liberian dollar, but everything uh, here is embedded in what I'm telling you, the Liberian dollar company. I think it's 80 20? Yes. 80 20 on the 80. 20% basis. So the total amount is in USD, that's the currency, but if it is $500 that you make and 80% of that is in US dollar, 20% is in Liberian dollar, it's in better. So this is US dollar uh, currency that we're talking about. Any more questions? Okay, so just as the DG was speaking, he mentioned the Ministry of State. And I will be informed that uh, the three person name as person of interest are employees of the Ministry of State and they are, they are being suspended in the outcome of the investigation. So, uh, Mohamed Kumar, Assistant Minister for Human Resources, Ministry of State. James Tucker, IT Controller, Deputy Controller, Minister of State, and Lamin Sharp, Director of Budget. These three individuals of the Ministry of State are suspended because they were listed as points of interest as a result of the investigation. Have you said? <coughs> Well, so I just needed to say something because uh, there are some very important persons here in the Charles Way on press call. Professor Larry Toba is no stranger to all of you. He's an icon of social justice. He's among men and women who dedicated their entire lives to struggle for our country. You know the rest of the history, where well, it's better here than wherever it was. Uh, Professor Larry Tupac was there. I'm glad that somebody that came can now be a part of the governance process. And Prof, I welcome to the Ministry of Information. Thank you, Honorable Minister. The rest of you who came with the DG, let me thank you for coming. But let me say this uh, as I thank all of you. DG, all of our actors in government are responsible for holding people accountable, following the footsteps. The image of the government would have been far better. Mm -hmm. We said missing boys were killed. We said missing boys were killed. The three missing boys we talked about here. Now we've been followed. What have we done about it? Are we investigating? 
We saw what happened at the UP headquarters. After the UP won the elections. What's happening to those investigations? We said auditors were killed. Why are we not trying to bring justice to the front of these people? We got statutory entities that have huge responsibility, and me, as a spokesperson of the government, we want to see them work. Like the Director General of the CSA. I want to be told, as the Minister of Information, that we are investigating these cases because that's what we said we do. We cannot deviate from what we said during the campaign after getting to power. People will believe committed crimes in this place. Many of us said the country has been looted over the last scale. We don't see one corruption case being put in the way. It's time to act. And I want to say people to follow the good example of the CSA, and not just the DG, but the team at the CSA that is trying to claim our payroll and saving us thousands of millions. That's what a government that came to power on holding people accountable should do. And I want to be on record in calling on all of the sectors, whether it's LACC, it's GSC, it's the Ministry of Justice, that begin to do those things we promise the people, that hold people accountable. Those who depend on us and believe that when we took power, we investigate these cases and bring the alleged perpetrator to justice, are still looking forward to us. Let's start something. And I just want to send this message because I feel very passionate about that. I want to see us doing those things we're supposed to do because it will not hold people accountable, trust me, like we're being a visual circle. Yeah. And we must correct it now. So thank you for coming, Mr. DG. Thank you, Professor Tuba and the rest of the team. The Minister of Information is here, the President now is on record to say, don't run my government on Facebook, don't run my government on talk shows, go to the Minister of Information. They are the source of government spokesmanship. Go there, work with them, and come and hear what the government is doing. And the DG has been here more than 10 times. So if there's no one who's in the brain this platform, there's a DG. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister. So, colleagues of the press, we'd like to say thank you for always coming here to complement our work. We will be back here next week with another interesting edition of the <laughs> we'll be on Thursday for another interesting edition of the Mega Breakout Press Briefing. We say thank you to all of you for coming. We will now ask our minister to leave. Thank you. Thank you. Focus on Nigeria. Thanks for watching. We are at the conference of the press room of Jamaica. We have the Federation of Civil Service Agency Director General of Japan. And the Minister of Safety. My name is Gwenda Lentorado. Thanks for watching.